This is creating your encore career and becoming a silver entrepreneur with your host, Lynn Freest. Lynn will share ideas and expert advice from people that are walking in your shoes and living their encore careers, where they want and at the pace they want. You'll start a company of one with confidence and knowledge to live a fulfilled life of freedom and ease. Lynn is a coach and leadership consultant whose mission is to show senior leaders and experts how to start something refreshing and new after a full career in the corporate environment. Hello, welcome to this episode of Creating Your Encore Life. This is where you can learn to do the work you love, when you want, and where you want. You can be creating value in the world beyond just winning that next pickleball game or sitting around binge watching Netflix shows. Instead, you can live your dream, just like I am. If you're ready to get started today, please contact me at lynn at lynnfreas.com. As always, thank you for listening. This is episode number 208, and I'm going to go over 10 questions, worries, and fears on making transitions. And some of these will be quite similar, but I think each of them is worth a little bit of a conversation. The very first one is being paralyzed by the fear of change. Uh, some transitions, of course, we're choosing, but often transitions are thrust upon us. We're not having a choice. We've been laid off. There's been a change in our family situation. Other things have happened. Maybe our health has changed. So we can literally just be paralyzed by fear. And some of this, I, for me, gets back to what is fear? The fear of looking bad, not being successful. Often, for me anyway, my fear comes from, oh, I'm going to look bad because I don't know how to do something. It's one of those things where you really have to sit down and I think do some reflection on what is it you fear? And quite frankly, I would suggest writing it out. Uh, I think it really helps to get out of your head, write it on paper, put it on the computer, whatever it may be, or even speak it out loud to somebody. Here's the fear I have in this situation and really analyze what it is. The second item is you can be overwhelmed by the uncertainty that a transition may bring. Inherently, even if you've chosen a transition, you don't know what's on the other side of it. And I think, again, these transitions, as I've talked about in the past, there's always a phase in there, the middle, messy middle of the transition. And you haven't really figured out what's going to, what the new result is going to be or even how to do it. So it's the idea of you can get stuck there by uncertainty. And the thing, my friend Mike Kim says, what helps him in these situations is meditation and movement. So some of it is, yeah, think through what are the things you could do. Some will be practical. Some you still don't know how to do. Maybe your first step is to learn how to do, find out where you can learn how to do something. But that the uncertainty is there and is going to be there no matter what. If I'm trying to ride a, learn how to ride a bike for the first time, there's uncertainty, and it may actually hurt because if I fall over, what it might be. So it's the idea of uh, you have to, I won't say be comfortable, but you have to be willing to accept the uncertainty that that is going to happen in a transition. We don't move from one thing to another. We're probably moving pr from a position of where we're good, or at least pretty good at something, or something was working well for us. And all of a sudden, you don't move right into being just as good or having things just as comfortable as they were before. So it's the whole idea here is uncertainty is part of the part of what's going to happen. Number three is you're limited by past experiences and your past comfort zone, especially for in my example, I lived in the corporate world for 40 years. And while I may not have liked it, I understood it. And I knew how things worked, you might say. Even if it didn't go my way, I knew how things were working. So that has limited me. I've had to, I've said in earlier things, in the corporate world, and in particularly in manufacturing, you wanted to be 95% right before you did something because you did not want to make significant errors that might make poor products or whatever it is. Now, all of a sudden, I've had to say, no, that was a great mindset, a great experience. But in the entrepreneurial world, or like making these podcasts, I'm going to make more than 5% mistakes. In fact, I'm doing well if I'm only getting it right half the time. But those are the things that if, I, if I'm not willing to be bad at something, it's hard to start learning something new. And again, whether my feeling of my looking good takes me out of my comfort zone, am I willing to show up and be bad at something? And will other people think less of me because of that? Number four is there's resistance to new opportunities. So even if you've chosen it, 
or certainly if you haven't chosen it, these new opportunities can be scary. They're unknown. You won't be able to make the most of them. You may really be moving forward on faith that they're there. And but like I said, especially if it wasn't your choice to become an entrepreneur, you really like to want to go back to the way things were. And yet that's not going to be an option for you. So it's, you have to, again, what's my resistance? Why do I have that resistance? Often it's because I don't have skills, knowledge, or experience in that. So the resistance to resolve that, how do I get past some of that stuff? Number five, consumed by a sense of loss during transitions. So that happens. And that is truly part of the uh, transition. <clears throat> You're giving up the comfortable life you had before. In my case, even if I was dissatisfied with my job and corporate life, it was a great company. I was well rewarded there. All of a sudden, I had to give that up. And I got a monthly paycheck. I was eligible for bonuses and vacation, et cetera, et cetera. Now, all of a sudden, I lost all that. I still have resources. I still have a retirement. I have Social Security. So I haven't lost everything. Some people making these transitions don't have those advantages. But still, there was a loss. And it was hard to give up. There's literally, and what I've learned over time is, there is truly a grieving process. Even if you're giving up something you didn't really like, you knew what it was. And so that's no longer there. And so you really have to, now some of, sometimes said in other episodes is you have to find new friends. So sometimes the loss is I have to go work with a new group of people. I won't be with the same crowd I was with at work before. And that that's loss. Those friendships are there. But again, you may be in a new city, may be new adventure. You need to acknowledge the fact that you've lost some things, people or processes that you did before. And, and be willing to say, okay, I'm going to make, make the best I can and create a great new future for myself. And some of that, again, number six was unresolved grief. So you have to really think about this. This gets back to the, if we just kind of hold on to it, we can be sad and, and regretful of things literally for our whole lives. I regret doing this or that. We have to really be able to truly let go of that. We. And it's not necessarily, in some sense, you almost have to be able to for, forgive it. I forgive myself for the things that I've done in the past. But it's but holding on to the grief. I've talked to people that retired or lost their job or whatever, and they'll spend 20 years talking about what they lost. And was is that really made their life any richer going forward? So it's really, you have to be able to let go of things, I think. And in today's world, there's always going to be changes going on. So trying to hold on to the past, and it's not like you forget the past or there weren't good things that happened there, but you just have to be very conscious of that. Number seven, you'll feel deprived of growth because of fear. And that happens too, because it's hard to learn new things when you're afraid. And again, this has been true for me. I like routines. I like processes that are well-defined. Learning how to do video podcasts is, a, is an unresolved skill that I have, but I'm trying. But if I don't go out there and practice in the public and be bad at this, I'll never get there and fear can hold me back. I'm not going to try that because I, I won't succeed right away. Uh, that's going to be true. I'm slowly breaking down those fears I have of not looking good or not being 95% right and saying, yeah. Learning is, is growth, and learning is stumbling, and you learn a lot from your mistakes. And I've always known that intellectually. Now I'm, I'm really having to apply it. Number eight is uh, circling back a little bit, controlled by the inability to let go of the old. And some of that is, again, what we did before is we had routines, we had habits, we had just ways of doing things, and we'd possibly done them for a long time. So some of this is can I break my old habits? And I will suggest in the, having learned from people on how you build habits, you don't really break habits as you overlay new habits. So it's, uh, can I consciously create new habits, new routines, new ways of doing things, new processes that support me in what I want to become as opposed to 
holding on to the one supported me in what I was. So it's, it's the idea of, again, it gets back to this, can I let go, learn, and practice something new? Number nine is, am I overshadowed by feelings of loneliness in times of change? And I think this is something, especially what I found is, as I retired in the first months or years, is it was lonely. I had friends, I had family, my wife, my children, you know, all that was still around me, but I didn't have all those work friends and colleagues and all that stuff there too. So, and of course, I decided that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I didn't know how to do that. And I couldn't rely on my old friends because that wasn't something they were experts in or even working on. So I had to reach out and I did that early and have always found that beneficial. Found new friends, whether it be what they call mastermind groups or group courses or conferences or whatever it may be. I really had to start working with other people. And quite frankly, that's where you figure out things much faster because I can struggle and struggle trying to figure out something, whether it be technology or some new idea. And if I'm, but if I'm in a group of eight to 10 people, somebody there probably has something that will spark a solution for me. And so it's this whole working in a group, even if these people don't do the same thing that I'm doing, they have different businesses or different things they're trying to do. They have insights. In general, what we share is becoming entrepreneurs. So it's, I think it really helps to have other people around you in some fashion, however you choose to do that. It could be a local group. It could be an online group, any number of things. In my case, I've been blessed with being able to connect with people literally worldwide in the online space and become really good friends with people, some of whom I've been able to meet in person, some I've literally never met in person. But it, you have to be open to that. So it's, it's one of those things that loneliness makes life much harder in any case. And so it really helps to surround yourself with people who are maybe on a similar journey or at least can be supportive of the work you're doing. And then finally, number 10 is just being crippled by an unwillingness to step out of your comfort zone. And again, I've touched on this, I think, in some of the earlier ones, but it's, I'm always uh, remember a, a graphic that a, a woman shared with us and it had two circles. One, one circle was your comfort zone and the other circle was off to the side and above it was where the magic happens. And some of that is true. If I stay in my comfort zone, I can get really good at what I was doing but it's hard for me to get good at what I want to do. Inherently, my comfort zone is not always a learning zone, or at, at the very best, it's a, I'm just refining what I already know. What I really need to do is this make this step change in life from a good corporate employee to an entrepreneur, for example. That's a step change. I couldn't just become a better and better corporate employee and hope to become a, an entrepreneur while I did that. Uh, it's it's kind of like the um, Somebody once told me the you didn't get from a rotary dial phone to the iPhone through a series of small continuous improvements. Sometimes that works in life and in manufacturing, but not for these step changes when you make those in life. And quite frankly, in terms of transitions, it often is. It's not a small thing that's happening. It's a life quake or a big thing that's happening. So it's one of those things, again, you have to step out of the comfort zone because that's where the magic happens. That wraps up 10 concerns and questions and worries that people have on making transitions. Feel free to contact me and we can go into those in more depth if you'd like. And please send me replies if there's any of these that you'd like to for me to add on or expand on. So in conclusion, with an encore life, you can be creating value in the world and not just binge watching more Netflix shows. And you can learn to do the work you love when you want and where you want. And you can live your own dream. If you want to get started today, please contact me at lynn at lynnfreas.com or head over to my website, lynnfreas.com. You can go through and listen to a few podcasts and get on the email list. So look forward to seeing you in another episode. Thanks.